What's up about penguins? Today we're going to do 2018 number one. This is on phylogenetic tree, mutations, and natural selection. So first we're given the phylogenetic tree that represents evolution relatedness amongst bear populations based on mitochondrial DNA sequence comparisons. Polar bears are highly adapted for life in cold climates around the North Pole. Brown bears, black bears, and panda bears are found in warmer environments. Researchers collected complete mitochondrial DNA sequences from several populations of bears and constructed a phylogenetic tree to represent their evolution relatedness, as you see here in figure one. A researcher studying adaptations in bears sequenced the nuclear gene encoding a lysosomal trafficking protein list in polar bears, brown bears, black bears, and panda bears. There are seven inferred amino acid substitutions that are found only in polar bears. Mutations that cause similar substitution in the human list protein are associated with an autosomal recessive condition in which pigment is absent from the hair and eyes. The researcher used the inferred amino acid sequences to build a distance matrix shown in Table 1, as you see here. So part A asks us to use the phylogenetic tree in figure one to estimate the age in hundreds of thousands of years of the most recent common ancestor of all brown bears. So if we look here at our phylogenetic tree, then we can see, okay, well, here is a brown bear, here's another brown bear, and then here's another brown bear. So we want to see where is the common ancestor of all the brown bears. So you have to look at that divergence point or the branch point. So you're going to see that branch point right here. And if you drop that line down, you're going to see that it is somewhere between 3.0 and 3.5 hundreds of thousands of years ago. Um, and so the scoring guidelines said as long as your first two digits are between 30 and 35, you would get credit for this one. So the second part says, identify the population of brown bears to which polar bears are most closely related based on mitochondrial DNA sequence comparison. So if we look here, we see here's our polar bear and here are the European brown bears and they're sharing that branch point, which tells us that the polar bear and the European brown bear are most closely related. So of course, the answer says European. Now we have to identify the two populations whose positions could be switched without affecting the relationships illustrated in the phylogenetic tree. So as we already talked about, the polar bear and the European brown bear share a branch point, which means they can rotate. Now there's another one that has the same branch point or another branch point. We've got the Western North American brown bear and the Asian brown bear that also share a branch point, which means they can rotate. So you could have given either one of these answers of European and polar or Asian and Western North American. So the student says the age is approximately 325,000 years old. Based off mitochondrial DNA, polar bears are close to the European brown bears. Western North American brown bears and Asian brown bears could switch position without changing any relationships. Now, notice that the question said to identify, but also notice that the student wrote these in complete sentences. I always recommend to my students that they write their um, FRQs if they're an identification point to go ahead and write that as a complete sentence just to ensure you get that point. So part B says to construct a cladogram on the template to represent a model of the evolutionary relatedness among bear species based on the differences of the list protein sequences as seen in table one. So if we look here at table one, we see that the lowest difference is between the black bear and the brown bear. And so we know that the smallest amount of differences mean that they're the most closely related. So we'll go ahead and put these onto our cladogram, of course, at the closest, closest little branch point. So we have our black bear and our brown bear. As we already mentioned, if there's a branch point, you can rotate. So that means that the brown bear and the black bear could actually rotate amongst this branch point right here. And so now we're gonna look for what is the next closely related, so the next highest number. We see that the black bear and the brown bear have a seven and an eight with polar bear. So we know polar bear is next. And then the 33 and the 34 go with the panda bear, so that would be our last individual. It then tells us to circle the position on the cladogram that represents the out group. The outgroup is going to be the one that diverges off first. It's going to be the one that has the most differences from the other organisms. So we know that that would be our panda bear. So we circled our panda. Now notice in this diagram, I put the names at the end of the line. Um, an error that I see a lot of students doing is they're trying to write on the lines as their answers. And that's just showing the lineage of them. So please make sure that you're writing at the end. Um, in addition, when it asks you to circle the position, make sure you're circling the end and circling the, the organism name. So, of course, scoring guidelines say that you correctly illustrated the relationships and that you correctly circled that out group. You were able to get this last point without actually getting, like if your organisms were in the wrong spot, you could still get this point by understanding where the out group was on the cladogram. So a student put panda polar black brown um, and of course circled that panda so they have full credit on this part. So part C, student claims that mitochondrial DNA sequence comparisons provide a more accurate phylogeny of bear species than do list protein sequence comparisons, provide one piece of reasoning to support the student's claim. So if we're using the list protein sequence 
And we're comparing that with mitochondrial DNA. There are changes that could happen in your DNA that aren't happening in the protein. So, for example, um, a silent mutation. A silent mutation can change one nucleotide base pair, and that silent mutation may still code for the exact same amino acids, so you don't see a difference in the protein. And so because of that, that there is a lot more variability in DNA than protein. That's one reason. Also, think about mitochondrial DNA is lots of genes versus the list protein is just a single gene. And so the different options you could have put, genes show more variability or nucleotide sequence than proteins do in amino acid sequences. The mitochondrial DNA genome contains multiple genes versus the one list gene. Or you could have said the phenotype associated with the list gene is under strong selection. So student says mitochondrial DNA has a wider array of genes, therefore amino acids, to study and compare from species to species than list gene does. There's only seven amino acids with fewer comparisons. List has fewer opportunities and is less accurate than mitochondrial DNA. So part D, a researcher genetically engineers a mouse strain by deleting the mouse list gene and replacing it with the polar bear list gene. Predict the most likely difference in phenotype of the transgenic mouse strain compared to the wild type strain and then justify your prediction. So we know that, that list gene is going to cause the polar bear to be um, white fur. Like so we would expect the mouse to also have white fur. We also know that if you have that list gene in a human, they're going to have non-pigmentation on their hair and their eyes. And so I would expect the same thing from that um, the mouse because it has the same gene uh, being inserted. So the option you could put here was the mouse fur and eyes will have no pigment or will have reduced pigment. We're saying that the mouse fur is going to be lighter. And the reasoning why? Polar bear's list gene is associated with lack of pigment or white hair. And the mutated human list gene is associated with lack of pigment in the hair and the eyes. So student says the most likely change is that the mouse will appear white due to the lack of pigment in its fur. This seems likely because polar bears are normally only white. Humans who have similar list mutations also display a lack of pigment in their hair and eyes. Overall, the mutations appear to cause lack of pigment. So the last question says describe how the mutation in the list gene become, became common in the polar bear population. If the list gene were only detriment of uh, fur color, predict the percent of white offspring produced by muting, mating between a polar bear and a brown bear. So first we have to think about that mutation and how did it become common? So the polar bear lives in uh, an environment where there's a lot of snow and ice. And so by having the fur being white, it would allow the individuals to hide um, and then, of course, capture their prey a little bit better. And so because of the fact that the individuals who were white or had white fur, they're more likely to get more food. So then they could have more offspring and we would see an increase in this gene over time, like for the increase of the frequency. So all we're seeing, natural selection. So natural selection of the white fur type. And of course, don't just name drop. You got to at least describe it. Um, and then the second part we wanted to talk about is that um, if we had a polar bear and a brown bear, let's go back to the prompt for a second and make sure that we've got, we got all the information that's important for us. There are seven inferred amino acid substitutions that are found only in polar bears. So if I'm crossing a brown bear and a polar bear, the polar bears can be homozygous recessive and the brown bears can be homozygous dominant. That means that 0% are going to be white because of the fact that the brown bear's dominant allele is going to mask the recessive allele found in that polar bear. So a student says the list gene became common through the process of natural selection. After the mutation appeared, white individuals gained an advantage in their environment. Hunting became easier since they were blending in with the snow and ice. Because these individuals were more successful in eating, therefore surviving more, they were able to reproduce and carry on the mutation. The mutation was so advantageous, it eventually became commonplace. So if that was helpful, oh, I'm ahead of myself, sorry. Uh, the percent of white offspring uh, reassuming, I'm sorry, assuming the offspring survived and could be conceived should be zero. The similar mutation of lists in humans is recessive. Therefore, brown bears would be dominant and pass the dominant coloring to all their offspring. So I hope that was helpful. Remember, AP Biopay, who's success. Bye, y'all.